the twin tube shock absorber can be remanufactured using the Mangusta or the lathe machine. Suppose you make it with the Mangusta, you have to place the shock absorber on the vise. The advice is adjustable enough to fit any kind of shock absorber. Then you have to fix also the body with the counterpoint. Then, on the screen of the Mangusta, you have to adjust the position of the blade, the rotation speed of the shock absorber, and the penetration of the blade. The first time must be made manually, but then can be memorized and used on the same type of shock absorber as much as you want. Then put the blade and its holder. It must regulate it at the end of the body in order do not cut too much the body. Then the body of the shock absorber starts to turn. The blade starts to penetrate into the shock absorber, cutting the edge. As soon as the edge has been cut, you have to remove the blade and the cut is finished. You can also open the shock absorber on the lathe machine. You block the body on the mandrel and with the tool you penetrate on the top of the body in order to remove again the edge of the shock absorber. Be careful because in some cases could be a little bit pressurized. If, press, if it is a twin tube shock absorber there isn't a big risk because the pressure is used to be quite low. Remove the edge, the oil seal, separate the parts, remove the oil from the body, remove the guide, Remove the rod with the piston from the inner cylinder and the rest of the oil. Clean all the components, even the one that you will throw away, because it's better to check if everything was in good conditions, even before to replace the part. So clean the rod, remove the stop rebound. When cleaning you have to use paper, you have to use also a tissue and compressed air. Because doing a video we couldn't use compressed air, I'm sorry. Clean this inner cylinder inside and outside. With a Teflon bar, not metallic, 
remove the bottom valve. Be careful, do not introduce dirty into the bottom valve. Clean the cylinder inside and outside and check if it, inside there is any scratch. Clean the bottom valve using compressed air and leave it very clean. If any dirty, shock absorber will not work. A twin tube shock absorber can be easily thread by hand using the Emetex screw tabs guided by the centering device. At the end of the catalog, you have the whole range of of uh, thread tabs and centering device. Fit the centering device on the thread tab Fix the body of the shock absorber on the vise Fit the centering device on the body of the shock absorber and fix the tool on the thread tab. Remember it is very important to lubricate the thread tab. Make a mark on the tool in order to count how many turns you make. In this way you will know how many millimeters you penetrate into the body. In this case, we did now three turns, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine and a half, ten. So now we remove the screw tab. We did 10 turns. So suppose that the pitch was one millimeter. We create a thread of 10 millimeters. The length of the thread must be related to the length of the thread ring. The thread tab can be used also on the lathe machine. The result is perfect. Now we have to check that the thread ring penetrates into the body and how much. As you can see, since the thread ring is just a millimeter, it penetrates completely into the body, leaving two millimeters of free thread. When closing the shock absorber, the thread has to press the oil seal without achieving the end of the thread. Otherwise, it will be blocked on the body, while we want the thread ring to block the oil seal and the lower parts. Now that we finish to work on the body, we can dismount the piston Sometimes the nut is blocked on the rod and you have to unblock it on the lathe machine. Dismount all the parts without making confusion with their order and the position. So our suggestion is to place all the components in the original order and position and then start to clean all of them part by part. Clean the rod. Remember that 
clean is very important because if any dirt in the oil, the shock absorber will not work. And dirty means also powder. Remember to clean always with compressed air that we couldn't use during the video. Fit the components. Clean very well the piston. If needed, change the Teflon band. If you want to change damping forces, you have to change the calibrator or the bleeds on the piston and, of course, the shims or the number of the shims. You can change also the spring. Into the catalog there is a wide range of springs for the rebound. You can also change the length of the nut in order to improve the preload on the spring. Everything depends on the final calibration that is wished. When closing, before tying, double check that the compression shim is properly fitted, otherwise the shock absorber will not work properly. Try to move it with the finger and check if it moves or if it is blocked because I'm properly mounted. If everything is okay, tie the nut by first by hand and then with the tool. Change the oil seal and the other sealing parts and we start to mount it just to make a test. So first the bottom valve on the inner cylinder the rod with the piston into the inner cylinder the guide fit the guide properly into the inner cylinder, then into the body, the oil seal, being careful, do not damage it, and the thread ring. As you can see, it protrudes from the body a lot, so cannot be closed. It is protruding 11.7 mm. Now we have to dismount all the components and to reduce the length of the inner cylinder. We will reduce the length of the inner cylinder in order to be able to thread in the thread ring. But we want that the thread ring presses the oil seal. It means that the thread ring cannot arrive to the end of the thread made on the body. So we will reduce the length of the inner of the inner cylinder just 11 millimeters more or less. In this way we will be sure that the thread ring will not touch the end of the thread made on the body. And it will mean that the thread ring will press the oil seal. So we reduce the length of the inner cylinder, we remove the chips,
and finally after cleaning again we mount again again the bottom valve we fill the oil into the inner cylinder and then we push the rod in. We have to check the oil into the inner cylinder and to control that when we push the rod in, the oil into the inner cylinder must come up from the inner cylinder. If it moves down and come up through the wall, means that something is wrong. The piston in compression must be softer than the bottom valve in compression. And this, is, this happens when the oil comes up through the inner cylinder. If the piston in compression is harder than the bottom valve in compression, the oil will move down and will come up from the interspace. In that case, we, the, means that we have to change something into the bottom valve or in the piston. For more details, please contact Emetech. We push the rod in. We put the rebound stop. We fill the rest of the oil. Then the guide and we extend the rod out. The shock absorber, a twin tube shock absorber must be mounted with the rod out. Then we put the oil seal. and the thread ring. At the beginning we tie it with a short tool and then with a longer one. As you can see now the thread ring stops at the same level of the body of the shock absorber. It means that it doesn't arrive to the end of the thread in the body. So it is stopping on the oil seal and is pressing all the components below. Now the operator has to move the rod up and down and filling if any oil gap. If any oil gap means then the bottom valve is working according to the piston and vice versa. At this point, if everything is okay, we can finish pressurizing the shock absorber. If possible, we always suggest to pressurize the shock absorber from the top. We suggest also to pressurize always with nitrogen. Pressure must be related to the forces of the shock absorber and the diameter of the rod. It means that the pressure must be include between a minimum of two or three bars and a maximum of five, six bars. Then remove the injector and the job is finished.